Program. The race to roll out a global coronavirus vaccine is ramping up as developers of Russia's Sputnik V inoculation have struck a deal with an Indian company to produce more than 100 million doses of the jab. The Sputnik V was the world's first registered coronavirus vaccine, but it's been overshadowed by other products developed in Europe and the US. That's despite the fact that new data from Russia shows Sputnik to be more than 91% effective at protecting people from the virus. Russian scientists have also suggested that combining the shot with the AstraZeneca vaccine for additional protection. Well, for more on the Russian results, we're joined now by Chris Smith, virologist and managing editor of the Naked Scientist podcast. Thank you very much for speaking to us. So this vaccine was the first to be registered. It has been somewhat overshadowed by more recent announcement. Uh, should it be? This vaccine actually did come out in a hurry, but people are sceptical because they haven't seen very much data. We haven't had much information on how it works, what it does, what the long term effects are and so on, because... Uh, the, the Russians haven't shared that data. And this has led to some people being a bit sceptical as to how safe it might be. So how, how would we normally go through that process and where do you think maybe there hasn't been the right level of access to information? Well, the way the process normally works is people do a series of phases of trials. The first trials, phase one, look at the safety of something. Phase two looks at whether or not it works in a small group of people. And then phase three looks at a very large group of people under real world circumstances to see whether or not it really does do what it says on the tin. And then you share that data with the regulators and also the WHO give their nod of approval. And if it passes muster, then it can go into circulation. The Russian vaccine questions have been called about this because the, the numbers of people in some of the trials and the numbers of cases have been quite low. And isn't it interesting that Vladimir Putin doesn't seem to have had it himself? Mm, we have reported on that already. Just explain to us which of the vaccines, if any, have actually had independent approval of the findings that the companies have registered. Well, that's what's happening right now. So the first company really across that line was Pfizer. They've, in the last few weeks, announced the results of their genomic vaccine. This is a brand new way of making vaccines. The way it works is that you take the genetic code from the coronavirus that corresponds to the outer coat of the virus and you wrap that up into a, a sort of oily bag and you make millions of particles like that, inject them into the body, and at the site of injection, cells unwrap that oily packet, get the genetic message out, read it, and then present to the immune system what the outer coat of coronavirus would look like, were they really infected. That has been tested on tens of thousands of people. The results seem very promising, more than 90% effective. And as a result of that trial, Pfizer have now asked the American regulator for rapid approval under the emergency protocol. And I understand that they'll be doing the same thing in other countries, including the UK, for example, presenting that phase three data to the regulator and asking them to make an independent appraisal of the safety and the track record of that vaccine and therefore approve it under emergency circumstances for rolled out. Of course, the other vaccine that generated a lot of headlines was the AstraZeneca and the Oxford University one. There were some questions raised yesterday about the data. Can you just explain to us what they are and should it be cause for concern? Well, what happened is that when they were preparing the vaccine in the trial, some of the doses were lower than they had anticipated. Originally, all of the people in the trial should have had two high doses of, of the vaccine. And in fact, some subjects got a, a first dose that was half what it should have been. Uh, now, that wouldn't normally be a problem if you just want to test whether something's safe or, or if it works. But when they actually looked at the data, they found that the people who got that lower dose to start with appeared to be responding dramatically better than people who got two high doses of the vaccine. So they're describing this as a serendipitous discovery, because if that turns out to be true and not just a statistical glitch, it could mean that the vaccine goes much further than we had originally anticipated. You can, you can get more bang for your buck, as it were. At the moment, they don't know why this has happened. And if we can account for why it, can, it has happened, and there are a number of medical reasons why it might have done, why they've got this better response rate, then obviously that gives us encouragement. But at the same time, it's undermined public confidence to a certain extent because people are already concerned that these vaccines are being produced at very, very fast pace, doing in 10 months what would normally take 10 years. And as a result, there's a degree of vaccine hesitancy. In other words, unwillingness to take the vaccine among certain sectors of society. And this is not going to help with that confidence. Thank you very much. That's been really clear. Chris Smith, virologist and managing editor.